Hi, this is Royce at Cunis and Macomb. Welcome to Cunis Car Combos. Today we're gonna go for a ride with Officer Sievers in this beautiful 2023 Dodge Charger GT. All right, so I am here with Officer Sievers uh, from Macomb. Royce Lee from Cunis. We're gonna ride around, talk a little bit about you know what we do together uh, to support each other in the community. So, tell me, Nick, how long have you been a police officer here at Macomb? I'm working on year eight for year the eight? Macomb Police Department. Yep, started in 2016, uh, fresh out of college. Nice, nice. Macomb guy, been in Macomb a long time. Uh, so fill me in, where did you go to school? Yeah, so I graduated from Macomb High in 2013. I uh, went to Iowa State University over in Ames, Iowa. Uh, graduated from there in 2016 uh, and came back to town, tested, and was fortunate enough to get a gig cop in here locally. Uh, I've born and raised in Macomb my whole life, so uh, nice. grew up here, love this community, love the people in this community, and was super stoked to be able to come back and uh, police where I grew up. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. That is awesome. So. You run a canine unit, correct? Correct. Awesome. So it's Mac. Yeah, Puff. Canine right? and Mac. That All is correct. Right. Mac and I have been working together since uh, late 2018, early 2019. Uh, Mac is a German Shepherd Mal mix. Um, he's about 85 pounds. He's actually from the country of Hungary. Oh wow. Uh, yeah. So he he was put on a plane when he was a pup. He's got a little puppy passport, which is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he came over from Hungary. Uh, we went and selected him uh, out of a number of dogs from Von Lick Kennels gotcha. uh, in Denver, Indiana. Uh, and then Mac and I stayed together over there for about a month for our initial training. Um, and we've been working there together ever since. Nice. So how long does uh, Max training uh, take part like what does that process look like because yes. I mean, it's got to be crazy yeah it is it's and it's kind of a continual process just like us as officers we have to do kind of in-house training we have minimum requirements we have to meet every year can't enter the same way so gotcha um, our training is actually as a team so it's him and I combined so uh, another officer couldn't just like grab Mac up on a day that I was sick or something and, and go work him it's we have to gotcha. be together as a team um, so our initial training was a month uh, it's a little bit longer if you have a dual purpose canine, but Mac is a single purpose canine, meaning he doesn't do bite work. Gotcha. Um, so he does narcotics tracking uh, and evidence searching. Nice. So uh, I kind of lump those all together, but narcotics is uh, methamphetamine, heroin, crack cocaine. He's imprinted on all those odors. Gotcha. Um, he's not imprinted on cannabis. Uh, evidence uh, searching could be uh, anything. So if you have a crime and someone flees, he could go find something that someone left behind, um, gotcha. something that was pitched when that individual was fleeing. Um, if you have a shooting scene, he could go find uh, spent cartridges that would help us locate gotcha. where a crime took place and maybe if there's some video that could paint a bigger picture for us. Uh, and then human tracking can be uh, you know, violent individual that just committed a crime that's fleeing. It could also just be uh, a juvenile that was playing outside and wandered away from the outlook. So gotcha. uh, kind of the whole spectrum. So you, we do our initial training for a month mm -hmm. uh, on those areas and then um, it's a continual process. So we train 16 hours uh, a month every month. Wow. Uh, after yeah. our initial month long training. Um, so, and again, it's, it's just one of those deals that you and your dog is a relationship and as a team you improve as you guys age. So you're one, there was headaches we had that yeah. obviously you got to combat, but now uh, we've been doing it about six years and uh, it's the five years, I believe. Um, it's it's like working alongside a partner. So we've, we've kind of awesome. got, got each other figured out by now. Good, <laughs> good. So does he, so Mac stays with you at home? He does, yes. Yeah. So Mac has lived with me since I brought him home from the uh, academy initially. Um, so he has kind of uh, progressed in his home life. So initially he was outside, and t those typical things you see with police canines. He had a kennel yep. outside, didn't come inside. And, that old boy sleeps on the on the floor right next to our bed now. Yeah. So he's living the high life, but uh, he does a really good job of distinguishing between work and home. Good. Um, when he's at work, you know, he's he's excited, he's eager to get to work, and he's got a ton of energy. And when we when we go off duty and we're at home, he's he's pretty much a pet. So good. Uh, he, he does a good job of knowing the difference. But it's it's nice to have a dog that I can not only work at work, but I can integrate him into our family at home. So, That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And I'm sure we'll get some some pictures and uh, some shots of Mac uh, when we get back. But awesome pup, we love to see him around. He's been to the dealership a couple of times. Um, we donated some 
some equipment for them because it's not cheap. Absolutely. I mean, what is what is usually uh, you know a canine unit run as far as cops? Uh, it's kind of a, a continual process just between food and uh, all your training materials that you use and the equipment. Um, I know that up front uh, initial fundraising goals are typically uh, twenty to thirty thousand, just wow. like your purchase of the dog, the training of the dog, and the handler, and then your initial equipment. Um, but He's just like us. He's got to eat, you know. We don't feed yeah. him, we don't feed him junk, so yeah. we got to buy, uh, you know, high quality food to keep him on the street and keep him healthy and doing what they're doing. Um, but Coons has been exceptional with kind of every step of the process. When we got our canine program up and running again uh, after it had lapsed, uh, Coon was great to us then. Uh, whenever there's a need for additional equipment, Coons was, uh, you know, one of the first local businesses to donate towards us. And then actually, just the. Uh, uh, revealing of a second canine who is back uh, as of September 1 working the streets coons again donated in that process so it's been a wonderful relationship oh I love it I love it no it's something that we're we're excited about especially in the community absolutely so when we talk about Mac so off-duty Mac does he get any special treats? Does he like to have ice cream? What's he do? <laughs> Mac will eat absolutely anything you feed him. <laughs> if you had to ask me what his favorite food was, it's it's literally anything. Um, I have never seen such a food-driven animal, um, and it, it's literally anything. That guy will eat whatever you give him. He, he is to the point where you'd think I didn't feed him because every meal he starts foaming at the side of the mouth when he gets yeah. that, that food hit the bottom of the bowl. but. Uh, he is a food driven animal. He's a, he's a busy boy and he loves to eat. So I'd say his favorite treat um, Would be bacon strips bacon yeah, strips. Yeah. <laughs> he you, loves usually that. if they smell worse to us, they taste better to them, you know, so. gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> but yeah, he will eat anything you put in front of him. That's awesome So kind of fill me in because a lot of people don't know all the community service stuff that you guys yep. do um, You know, I'm I'm privy to a lot of the stuff I see, you know, the, the Facebook posts and hear about you guys in the schools, uh, local community, stuff like yeah. that. But tell me in, what are you guys doing in the upcoming months with the community uh, to kind of give back? Yeah, so there's a number of things that we do, um, both the, the Macomb Police Department and our uh, FOP Lodge, FOP 189, which is our Fraternal Order of Police Lodge. Um, so we have the Scott Jennings Memorial Fishing Tournament. Uh, that takes place at Spring Lake, usually in May. Um, and we just take as many local kiddos that want to go out there fishing uh, nice. a day away from, you know, computers and cell phones and all those things and get them outside with their family, um, give away a ton of prizes and make sure everybody goes home with a full belly. So that's an awesome event. Yeah. Uh, one we've been doing for quite some time. It's funny. There's like some officers of the department that fished in that event when they were kids. And yeah. now they're here, they're 30, 40 years old. Their name's they still in the help. Yeah, absolutely. So that one's a fun one. Um, we do shop with a cop every yeah. December. Uh, shop with a cop is an awesome event for our, uh, our local youth. Um, we take usually over a hundred kids oh, wow. uh, to Walmart and we just kind of love them up and, and treat it like Christmas for them. So we spend a hundred dollars on each kid um, awesome. and it, you know, they, they get the necessary school supplies they need uh, and, and they'll get the clothes that they need to stay warm in the winter. But we like to make sure they get a couple toys and, and some fun things that, you know, maybe mom and dad unfortunately aren't able to provide and we can step in and help. And sometimes those are kids that unfortunately see us in negative situations at work when we are called to uh, intervene and it's awesome to be able to get together with them and uh, see them in a different light and be able to kind of be a, a, a good avenue for them to come spend some money have some fun and get some things that we can help them out with and make it a happier holiday season for them yeah um, no that's awesome yeah. especially seeing you as real people I mean you that's bet. that's bet. one of the biggest things that I see especially in the community you guys have done a great job of being in the community. You bet, yeah, you we, we try to. That stuff's super important and it's building relationships. You know, anything we can do to bridge that community to public, uh, to police gap. Yeah. Uh, just like you said, we like for them to see us as humans rather than just, uh, you know, somebody with a vest and a badge on. We want to be able to be approachable. We want them to know us. Uh, I, I love nothing more. We do a ton of demos at the school and things of that nature. And I can't go out to eat at a restaurant or go to a park with my kids and have someone come up without someone coming up and saying like, hey, you have K9 Mac. And that's awesome because that yeah. means, you know, it's a positive reaction that they're happy to talk about and something that they can uh, kind of grow upon rather than just like, ah, we only see the police when it's a bad day at home. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, that's absolutely. an awesome thing for us. We actually just did the, the FOP took on uh, another event as well. It's an, We did it in August. Uh, kind of a back to school event. Um, there was a need for some kids coming back to school. Uh, we, we do do the Christmas event, but some, some summer clothes, some back to school stuff. Uh, and we know that the school is always needing to uh, kind of build up the supply of those things. So we donated $5,000. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, to, to, to local 
uh, school staff to go kind of get everything they need, all the essential items to uh, outfit the, the kids at school, but more or less just keep them in house and that way they can dish them out throughout the entire year. So that yeah. was a super cool event for us to be able to partake in it. And honestly, a way for us to get to know teachers that we don't always see yeah. and kind of uh, put a name to a face. No, that's awesome. I mean, the the community and the police department, it, it's one of the, the smaller communities, in, you know, obviously in Macomb, we're so tight knit that we see each other out. Often. Like you said, yep. you know, out at dinner, we see chief or we see you, at, you know, mm -hmm. it's just cool to interact outside of that. It so. is. It's nice to be able to uh, work together. I think we all have a common goal when it, when it relates to making Macomb a, a wonderful place to live and yeah. raise a family and, and helping out everybody and you don't want any kids that are going to school or, or anything for that nature that just are falling on tough circumstances, you want to be able to help them out. And yeah. so I think that like whether it's Coons or whether it's the FOP or the police department, anything we all can do to get together and try to make this a better community, I think we're all in favor of, which is just awesome. Awesome. No, that's that's good stuff. There's coach right there. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of small towns, yeah, and everybody, you know, you a wave. I know, well. yeah, that's the tough part. I remember starting, and I was like, man, I don't know what I'm going to do because I, I know so many folks growing up here. Like, if I got to write them a ticket, that's going to stink. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's pretty rare, which is good. Yeah, no, it's good. <laughs> Nobody really gets out of hand. Yeah, which is, which is nice. Yeah, but fill me in, because uh, a lot of people don't know probably your day to day stuff. Um, what's something that you guys do or in, in your daily uh, routine that maybe the community doesn't know about? Yeah, so currently we work 12 hour shifts. Okay. Um, so we have a 6A to 6P shift, which would be our day shift, and then a 6P to 6A shift, which would be our night shift. Gotcha. Um, so we have rotating platoons uh, that cover those, those shift hours. Um, so typically what you have about that six o'clock hour on both sides of it is you have the night shift and day shift getting together and we kind of uh, brief each other on what's transpired the last 12 hours, things that okay. maybe are, would uh, bleed over under the un oncoming shift so that they can uh, be aware of you know how to handle those measures. And then uh, it's just a good a good opportunity to get together with you know a decent number of guys in the department and kind of just do a, uh, a laugh around, hang out, get, yeah. you know, just small talk, crack jokes and, and enjoy one another's presence. Um, so that, that happens every 12 hours at the police department. Nice. Um, when, and then when we get there, the supervisor will kind of read the reports that's transpired before and and keep everybody in the know. Um, we have a real close, tight-knit department. Uh, yeah. We've got a lot of young guys and girls, um, people that kind of, we have a, a assortment of people that, you know, some people like myself may want to go work at canine and work narcotics. And we have yeah. some people that really want to go make sure that distracted drivers are putting the phone down and not speeding. And we have, yep. you know, investigators that love to solve crime in the back end uh, and hold you know offenders accountable for anything that might have taken place and that's kind of what, what what is needed you have to have that diverse department and that well-rounded department otherwise you'll you'll fall short in certain areas which yeah. are obviously very evident so yeah that's that's something that's really cool we have different areas of department in different places for people to grow uh and stay here and have a long healthy career and not just do the same thing you know punching the same clock doing the same job for 20 20 years yeah no i mean that's obviously one of the the biggest things and you know to attract new police officers i'm sure you gotta have room for advancement so absolutely that's awesome yeah and we're doing everything we can right now obviously um you know policing is kind of like a i uh, compared to college recruiting right now yeah <laughs> yeah everybody's poaching each other's own um yeah. but you know we just we want to do everything we can to make ourselves appealing to uh whether it's new hires or lateral hires that want to come to this community and yeah. uh, make it a, a good place to work in a healthy, fun environment and uh, a decision that we'll regret. Yeah, so you guys are actively hiring. I've seen the ads on Facebook yep. and everything, which is awesome. Absolutely. Now, I'm sure you're integrated with, you know, WIU and the, the LEJ program. Yep. So, fill me in, are you doing uh, ride-alongs with kids while they're going through the training process? Do you guys do any of that stuff? Yeah, we do. So, uh, Officer Renata Sterlick is kind of spearheading our recruitment. She does a wonderful <laughs> job. She's the one that's making all those flyers, and she does an awesome job. So, that was something she took over, and she's ran with it and done, done excellent. But we uh, we go to all the career, uh, career fairs they have out at Western, yeah. um, and that's a good way to kind of get out and socialize with students. We run an internship program as well uh, three times a year, so that's a good way to get students that are potentially interested in, in working for uh, Macomb Police into our doors, have them around for whether it's four to five months and let them kind of see it uh, intimately and, and know what to expect and see if it's a good place, a good fit for them. Yeah. Cool. On top of that, we uh, we have an Explorer program. Okay. Uh, and so that's something 
uh, and you'd have to fact check me on the uh, the ages, but I want to say that's something the freshman year of high school um, until I believe 21 years old that, that people can partake in. And that's like a hands-on weekly training uh, experience with officers. They're getting uh, stuff taught by officers within the department. Each officer kind of has an area, area of expertise and they'll go teach the explorers and they'll be gotcha. able to do, to do training with real Macomb police officers. And that's awesome because it really gives them a look into our department. And, and we've had officers, uh, numerous officers, that have actually done the Explorer program. They've grown up locally and then they became their own police officers. And cool. that transition's a lot easier because they know what to expect. They've seen it. Uh, yeah. And uh, it's, it's been super beneficial. No, that's awesome. They have a, you know, a glimpse into what you're going to be getting into. Absolutely. That's that's huge. Yep. So, well, we're going to ask like some personal stuff. All right. Right. <laughs> so fill me in. How do you, how do you like the car? I love I mean, the we're car. driving the the Dodge Charger. Do you guys have some? I think you got some squad. Is your squad a, a Charger? My squad is a Charger. Nice. Yep. yep. Nice. I've uh, had it since 2018. I love it. It's uh, honestly, once you're in, it's pretty spacious. I'm a bigger guy, and it gives me tons of room to stretch my legs yeah. out. And yeah. um, it's obviously fast enough to get me where I need to go if we need to get somewhere urgently. Um, and honestly, the best part has been the back seat of my patrol car is a uh, the whole thing is a canine kennel. Oh, nice. Uh, and with it being close to the ground, it's a lot easier on Mac to jump in and out rather than like a, a, a taller or something. SUV. Easier yeah. on his joints, um, you know, so that's been great. But the car's wonderful. I love the car. This is a great car. I wish my car still smelled this good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love but, it. Uh, yeah, I highly recommend the Chargers, and, and this one's sharp as well. Good, good. Well, and I've had the, the pleasure of, you know, personally helping out with some some vehicle purchases and i really appreciate not only you being in the community but active in the community you bet uh, yeah. and that's awesome because yes we love local businesses and local people helping everybody so yeah i will say thank you for yeah. that if we can keep business local you know that's important and it's yeah. uh, it's going to help the community and it's nice to be able to go do a, a deal with a friendly face that you know and you know whether it's uh two weeks or two years from you know, the time of purchase, Kansas is always willing to step in and help you yeah. and whatever needs you have, and that's clutch. So. No, I, I love it. And it's it's fun because when you know the local people and everybody uh, interacts, it just makes a great experience. You bet. So, Absolutely. I love it. Well, let's ask, uh, let's ask one of these personal questions. What's your favorite, what's your favorite experience that you've had while on duty? What's just been oh, like the man. over the top, holy cow, that was awesome. I'm so glad. I there's a ton of them. Then there's like some serious ones that, you know, whether we uh, held a uh, offender accountable that was, yeah. you know, committing a crime that, that needed to be, we needed to intervene. But I would tell you that the best thing, and it's kind of a good laugh, it involves coons, so I got to tell this one. <laughs> uh, so I was dispatched, it was pretty early in my career. It was like four in the morning. It was like zero degrees out, freezing cold. Mm -hmm. Dispatched to Coons for a uh, goat and a Rottweiler running loose together. Oh my gosh. Um, and so, <laughs> Of course, this is one of those calls that I thought like one of the supervisors made up just to keep us on our toes at 4 a.m. Messing with you, yeah. Dispatchers cracking jokes, you know. So, of course, I go out there and I don't expect to see anything of that nature. Yeah. Um, and sure enough, uh, right between Woodrum's and Coons, I located a goat and a Rottweiler that were running, running around. <laughs> they made it into Coons parking lot. Uh, the goat was seeing its reflection in the Coons windows and uh luckily didn't headbutt it but it was it was pretty comical and so at 4 a.m you don't have uh animal control up and ready to rock and roll so we were able to lure both the goat and the rottweiler into the back of a pickup or i apologize a squad car oh my gosh uh, and we rolled uh with the window down with the goat and the rottweiler <laughs> in the back of the squad car uh from coons to the animal shelter and i imagine the shelter was pretty surprised the next morning when they had both the goat and a rottweiler and and just so you know, the Rottweiler was essential to catching the goat because they were legitimately buddies. Really? They were yeah. like best friends? <laughs> yeah, yeah they, were, they were from the same house and uh, we've since talked to the owner. He got a good laugh out of it. Oh, that was probably gosh. one of the funniest calls that I've ever had because I, I sure thought I was getting pranked. <laughs> <laughs> a goat and a rottweiler. You're looking at it, you're like, there's no one. Yeah. There's no All right. It's, I'll it's go frowned on. upon for us to take videos when we're on duty of things that we encounter, but that was one that we we whipped out our cell phones and oh, uh, yeah. we, we had some good keepsakes from that event. That is awesome. <laughs> See, it's not all bad stuff. It's all a lot of fun stuff. Oh, yeah. Everybody, and, and that's the cool part of, I would say, the police officers. I mean, you guys are up and out all the time. You know, you're always yep. you're always on call and you're always willing to help, which is awesome. 
but I'm sure you guys get some crazy stuff. We do. We get some crazy stuff, and it's stuff that keeps you on your toes. But you know what? It makes it a joy to come to work every day because you never know yeah. what you're going to be doing. And obviously, there's parts of the job that aren't fun. Yeah. Uh, and there's calls for service that we wish we didn't have to, to go on and yeah. wish they didn't happen. But it's nice that, you know, not everything's that way. And there's plenty yeah. of stuff that we can laugh about. And there's things that happen that uh, kind of lighten the mood and uh, keep you coming back to work with a smile on your face. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I know uh, we're actually getting ready to roll kind of by the police station. I'll let this guy go. Go ahead, buddy. You can go ahead. He's not <laughs> going to go. I got my full stop. So... <laughs> I don't know if you can answer this or not, but this will be a fun question. What's the fastest you've stopped somebody while they were smiling? Oh man, there's been some good ones. I would say the, the number one spot we typically get some high speeders in town is uh, right there at Hearst Drive in 67. And I'm kind of putting my spot out there. I probably shouldn't say <laughs> yeah, your secret uh, hiding yeah, spot. Yeah, but just coming into town on the north side. Yeah. Uh, and it's a 50 mile per hour zone, and we've gotten some high 90s in there. Ooh. So, uh, almost double the speed limit. It's hard to really go much faster, you know, anywhere in town. Yeah. Uh, you would like to think. Um, but that one, you know, if they're, if they're not paying attention and they're rolling into town and they're in a hurry or they're looking forward to getting somewhere, yeah. you'll get some speeders there. So I've, I think 96 is probably my personal fastest 96. right there. 96. Yeah. That is, that's moving. Yeah. <laughs> that's moving. I don't recommend that. No. No, that's not a pleasant experience when you get pulled over. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to argue that one. Yeah. No, no I didn't. Yeah. I wasn't looking down. But right, I've I, got a left yeah, foot too, so I'm yeah. usually pretty understanding. I, I, you know, we... We all like cars that go fast and get carried away, and I think that we're all pretty much uh, guilty of being late a lot of the time. So yeah. it's easy to speed. So usually I'm pretty uh, uh, understanding, but 96 and a 50 was a tough one. Yeah, no, there's nothing we can do. We all know where this is going. Yeah. You're going to pay the ticket. Absolutely. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, fill me in. Like, what is the next step for you and Mac? Um, you know, do you go up in the ranks? Do you help state? What do you guys like? What's your next level? Yeah, so K I Mac and I um, are both essentially employees of the city. So he's yeah. owned by the city. Uh, he's not technically mine. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, we just got uh, Officer Eric Kramer and K9 Jax yeah. back. Um, and so now we're kind of working on what we call like a handshake period where um, I'm kind of showing him the ropes and helping him train his dog up. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that they'll be super successful. I wanted to thank Officer Severs for rolling around in this beautiful Dodge Charger, telling us a little bit about what the Macomb Police Department does for the community and us here at Cunis. So we appreciate it very much. Thank you, Royce. Thank, thank you. you so much. Appreciate, appreciate it. Thank you, guys.